everybody. Uh, we've got Jean from Hawaii, and Sling hasn't been because of for a while, but she's back, and Madame Anique is here, so we have the international table going again. <laughs> uh, as a, yeah, it's, it's, it's very full today. Uh, the last go show that, uh, the last lecture from volume seven of Teachings for Victory that we read was uh, number six, mm. Stand Up With Courage, and that was, then I, then I had a little talk that I gave a month ago or three weeks ago, okay? And um, I had promised that I was going to extend that conversation. I think it's premature for me to do that at this point in time. So the reality is that there's the rest of this volume seven is talking about exactly what I talked about. So uh, it makes me feel much more comfortable to express it since <laughs> Daisaku Akeda is going to say the same thing I didn't know he was going to when I opened my mouth uh, last time. So uh, I'll save that for the next Go Show, which is really what he's going to talk about is what I was talking about, the mission of our Soka network. Yeah. Okay, so this all falls right into this. This gift of rice falls right into this. And then after that, before it's all over with, and that we're gonna, then the next one is uh, on rebuking slander and eradicating sins, which is totally in line with what I was talking about. And then we're going to do, uh, uh, pardon me, the great battle, which is exactly what I was talking about, and then on establishing the correct teaching for the peace of the land. And I will read the whole Go Show as part of that again. Okay, so uh, today we're going to start on page 93. The entire Go Show uh, is, is, is in volume seven of Teachings for Victory. It's not a long Go Show, Gift of Rice. It's on somewhere here it's on page uh, 1125 of uh the of volume one of writings of nietzsche and daishonin i'm going to read the gosho background which is on page 1126 and then get into the text of the gosho itself um, this letter is missing the name of its addressee and the date of composition okay so this is another example of what i was talking about before if you talk about the difference between what we're embracing as a teaching and what some of the other schools embrace, for instance, again, going back to the Minobu school, Nietzsche and Shu, this letter would have never made the cut. To not know who it was to and not to know who it was, where it came from or when it was composed, and then the reality that it was obviously to a lay person, they would have just tossed it. It's not in their lexicon of understanding. They don't have the goshas we have because they didn't collect the goshas that were real, just ca casual letters to, uh, 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 you know, uh, followers that he was trying to encourage. So, again, bottom of page 1126, the background. This letter is missing the name of its addressee and the date of composition. The title, Gift of Rice, derives from the opening passage of the letter in which Nietzsche and Daishonin gives thanks for the offerings made, uh, gives thanks for offerings made. It also indicates the theme of this letter, which addresses the spirit of offering in Buddhism, which is what we do when we try to practice for the sake of Kosen Rufu, right? That is an offering, just like if you were tithing money or leaving flowers or incense or fruit or whatever. It's an action, actually, of, 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 of devotion. Mm. It also indicates the theme of this letter, for, which addresses the spirit of offering in Buddhism. While sages of old practice, practiced offering in actuality, giving their very lives for Buddhism, ordinary people in the present age practice offering in principle, giving what sustains us or what sustains or is of value to their lives. Ultimately, the Daishona says, earnest resolve is what makes offering or almsgiving in, uh, in Buddhism a meaningful act, earnest resolve. The Daishonin thus equate, equates the polished rice he has received to life itself, because he says one can't exist without the other. Life can't exist without food. Life at Mount Minobu was harsh, uh, and the Daishonin and his disciples were often in need of food and other provisions. Fortunate, fortunately, he had a loyal group of lay supporters who helped provide him with necessities. Okay, so now going ahead and reading the Go Show uh, from Volume 7. Again, like I said, the whole thing's there. It starts on page 93. Okay, the earnest resolve that unlocks infinite hope and boundless strength. What's, uh, 
infinite hope and boundless strength. The earnest resolve that unlocks Well, infinite hope and boundless strength is faith. Mm -hmm. Okay? So it unlocks infinite hope and boundless strength. Correct? Faith. Mm -hmm. All right? He goes, it, the Go Show starts uh, on page 93. Mm -hmm. Human beings have only, ha, pardon me, human beings have life owing to food and regard food as their treasure. Life is the foremost of all treasures. It is expounded that even the treasures of the entire major world system cannot equal the value of one's body and, one, and life. Even the treasures that fill the major world systems are no substitute for life. A single, a single day of life is worth more treasure than all the treasures in a major world system. It's all, I always it, say it's, that it's, to everybody. It's the only reality that exists. Your life in a your you know single moment of life is the only reality that exists. Yes. Okay. Life is like a lamp. Uh, uh, pardon me. Life is like a lamp and food like oil. When o the oil is exhausted, the lamp goes out, and without food, life will cease. This is why those known as the sages and worthies of ancient times offered their lives to the Buddha and then became Buddhas. Think about when we read the Lotus Sutra, the medicine king and burning torch and all those guys, okay? He says, however, as for the matter of becoming a Buddha, ordinary people keep in mind the words earnest resolve and thereby become Buddhas. So the Daishonin is qualifying. However, as for the matter of becoming a Buddha, Ordinary people, he would be speaking to people that live in the nine worlds, okay? Mm -hmm. Most of those people that he's referring to from the sutras really weren't of the nine worlds. You know, uh, Medicine King burned his arms for, a, I mean, come on. I don't think you could survive that if that was something that ordinary persons had to endure. Okay, so he says, what we, how we go about doing, showing that, that uh, devotion is rather than doing austerities of peeling off skin or bizarre things like that, mm -hmm. we devote our lives to the propagation of the correct teaching. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I can say to the propagation of law, but it's very important that the law that's propagated be the correct understanding, the correct teaching of that law. Okay, so he says, when we carefully consider what exactly earnest resolve refers to, it is the doctrine of observing the mind. When we inquire what exactly the doctrine of, of observing the mind refers to, it means that offerings one's, offering one's only robe to the Lotus Sutra is equivalent to peeling off one's skin, and that in a time of famine, offering the food that is the only means for maintaining one's life that day to the Buddha is offering one's life to the Buddha. Now, when he says Lotus Sutra, what's he talking about there? though. It's the latter day of the law when he wrote this letter. Again, whenever he's writing a letter and he talks about the Lotus Sutra, unless he's very specific about referring to the text, he's really talking about nam myoho rengeke when he's talking about the enlightened life condition of the original teacher. All right? The truth, the true path that I shown and continues lies in the affairs of this world. The Golden Light Sutra states to have a profound knowledge of this world is itself Buddhism. Mm -hmm. The Nirvana Sutra states all of the non-Buddhist scriptures and writings in society are themselves Buddhist teachings and not non-Buddhist teachings. What makes that possible as the truth? What makes that the, a, a, a real reality? Absolute Mio. Okay. So when the great teacher Miolo compared these, which, which me, an absolute Mio is the concept that everything is included in the truth. Okay, right. so even the things that would seem to be the opposite of the truth, as long as they're part of the phenomenal reality of life, they're included. Yeah. Okay, so 
when the great teacher Miolo compared these passages with uh, one from the sixth volume of the Lotus Sutra that reads, no worldly affairs of life or work are ever contrary to the true reality. He revealed their meaning and pointed out that although the first two sutras are profound, since their meaning uh, is still shallow and fails to approach that of the Lotus Sutra, they, re uh, they relate secular matters in terms of Buddhism. Whereas the Lotus Sutra explains that in the end, secular matters are the entirety of Buddhism. Okay, let me continue. The essence of the sutras preached before the Lotus Sutra is that they all is that all phenomena arise from the mind. I mean, that's the whole basis of the flower garland which launched everything, right? To illustrate, they say that the mind is like the great earth, while the grasses and trees are like all phenomena. But it is not so with the Lotus Sutra. It teaches that the mind itself is the great earth and that the great earth itself is the grasses and trees. The meaning of the earlier sutras is that the clarity of mind is like the moon and the pure and that purity of the mind is like a flower. But it is not so with the Lotus Sutra. It is the teaching that the moon itself is mind and the flower itself is mind. There's no separation between anything whatsoever, period, period, period. That's what that's actually revealing. You should realize that, that from this that polished rice is not polished rice. It is life itself because you've got to see it beyond just the limited issue of how it appears and perceive it as its nature, as it relates to everything and becomes part of the, the cumulative whole that's always present, mm -hmm. okay? Everything's constantly regenerating, right? Mm -hmm. Life, everything, 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 everything. The oxygen is being regenerated, okay? We're giving out carbon dioxide that's going through a process of then feeding the plants that spit out oxygen at us again, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this all is in complete keeping with science mm. as it relates to what's actually being expressed from a, from a philosophical standpoint. Uh, and that's the end of the Gosho. The, end, the Gosho ends, uh, uh, it, the, the, it is the teaching that the moon itself is mind and the flower itself is mind. You should realize that from this that polished rice is not polished rice it is life itself. Again, this is from a Gosha. It's not complete. It's not, and they're not even, they're not even sure who it was written to or when. All right. But it's very, very profound. So going to page 95, you're going to see right here that it goes uh, like in about the third paragraph, there's a reference to the orally transmitted teachings, which concerns the mind. Again, this is from the second chapter of the Lotus Sutra, the expedient means chapter. And though he references which I just happen to have bold without being told, uh, on page 30. I'm going to go ahead and go back to page uh, 28 and read from this point uh, 3 of uh, chapter 2 on the, or in the orally transmitted teachings on, from the expedient, ch expedient means chapter of the Lotus Sutra. All right. The record of the orally transmitted teaching says, so this is like the Daishonin now qualifying, this is my take on this, all right? The record of the orally transmitted, te transmitted teaching says, one represents the middle way teachings of the Lotus Sutra. Great represents the teachings on non-substantiality of the Flower Garland Sutra. And the affair represents the teachings on temporary existence of the Agama, Correct and Equal and Wisdom Sutras. The three lesser flavors of milk, cream, and curdled milk. The, teach, the, the sutras preached prior to the Lotus Sutra te, set forth the doctrine of the three truths, but in a form like that of a shattered jewel, not that of a perfect treasure. So he's saying this, these, these pre-Lotus Sutra teachings were not incorrect, but they were not, a, they were not the correct teaching for the latter day. Okay, because the latter day is the day for the Lotus Sutra to be propagated as Nam Yaho Rengekyo, right? All right, so, so he, he continues. So what, again, he's, he's not saying that they weren't uh, jewels, but they were shattered jewels. They weren't complete. They weren't complete and final. That's what makes them all 
not to be uh, followed in the latter day. Again, we may say that one stands for myo, great stands for ho, a fair stands for rin, because this is all about, uh, pardon me, uh, point three regarding the passage, because the Buddha's world honor ones appear in the world for one great reason, all right? For one great reason. Why does a Buddha appear in the world? What? To make it more Everyone more else equal to himself. Yeah. They're to propagate the law for the sake of the pacification of the land. Again, one may say that one stands for myo, great stands for ho, affair stands for, and, and affair stands for rin. Cause stands for ge, and condition stands for kyo. So he's saying it's all nam yo ho rin ge kyo. Or again, we may say that our head corresponds to myo, our throat to ho, our chest to rin, our stomach to ge, and our legs to kyo. Hence, this five-foot body of ours constitutes the five characters of myo ho rin ge kyo. They are not outside of us. It is the essence of everything, including us. Okay? He says, for a period of more than 40 years, the thus come one Shakyamuni concealed and kept secret this great affair of why, all the, why Buddhas appear in this world. Because there wasn't a means for people to achieve Buddhahood in their present form until nam myoho renge Only theoretical Ichin and Sanzen could be achieved. Actual Ichin and Sanzen requires nam myoho renge to be achieved. For a period of more than 40 years, the thus come one Shakyamuni concealed and kept secret this great affair. Only when he came to preach the Lotus Sutra did he reveal it. I must now reveal the truth. In these more than 40 years, I have not yet revealed the truth, he says, right? Mm. It was for the purpose of preaching this great affair that the Buddha made his appearance in the world, to preach the Lotus Sutra. When he revealed that our own bodies are the embodiments of the five characters of Myoho Renge Kyo, at he was, as chapter 2 of the Lotus Sutra says, opening the door of Buddha wisdom, revealing that we can attain Buddhahood in our present bodies or existences. Now, is that actually expressed verbatim in the Lotus Sutra? No. That's, that's an extrapolation that occurred through Nagarjuna and Nanye and Tintai and Chang'an and Myolo and Dingyo and Nichiren has an epiphany about all of these things that have been said. And he's the one that actually comes up with the uh, Japanese pronunciation of the Chinese and Sanskrit characters of Myoho Rengekyo, right? Mm. So, Nam Myoho Rengekyo. So he says, uh, when he revealed that our bo own bodies are the embodiments of the five characters of Myoho Rengekyo, he was, as chapter two of Lotus Sutra says, opening the doors, the door of the Buddha wisdom, revealing that we can attain Buddhahood in our present bodies or existences, which is the whole point of why we do what we do. Well, it's not to get benefits. Mm -hmm. right. There's a lot of benefit that you get in the process of making that cause, but it's actually to establish your highest life condition that's not predicated on things happening to you. It's what it's like burning torch in his arms. I can give a shit. I'll burn my arms. Okay. Mm -hmm. So opening here, opening here is another name for the mind of faith. Mm -hmm. So he's saying opening the door of Buddha wisdom is like opening the capacity of the mind to perceive through faith the correct understanding. Mm -hmm. When we recite Myoho Rengekyo, and when he says when we recite Myoho Rengekyo, it's Nam Myoho Rengekyo that he's actually saying. Mm -hmm. When we recite Myoho Rengekyo with the mind of faith, <laughs> we do that in front of the Gohonzon by chanting Nam Myoho Rengekyo, mm -hmm. we are in that very act opening the door of the Buddha wisdom. And at the same time, when we open up the mind of faith and chant and manifest Nam Yoho Rengekyo within our lives, and here he now says, he goes from, you know, from saying, reciting Myoho Rengekyo, he's talking about, and manifest Nam Yoho Rengekyo within our lives, which is the essence. It's not Myoho Rengekyo. That's, that's the title of a book. We are showing the, because it's the latter day of the law. <clears throat> Okay, it's not the time anymore for Myoho Rengekyo. It is now the time for Nam Myoho Rengekyo. Mm -hmm. The Buddha of this age has changed. Right. And also, that's the whole point. It's not Shakyamuni of the former and middle day. It's now the Bodhisattvas of, of the earth, all right? Mm -hmm. Who are all 
uh, disciples of Nietzsche and in reality. Even, and when we show them this, pardon me, let me go back. And at the same time, when we open up the mind of faith and chant and manifest Nam Yoho Rengeko within our lives, so we manifest the Gohonzon within our lives, we are showing the Buddha wisdom to living beings. We're showing other people how they may also achieve the same thing, awaken the same thing, and pacify the land in that process by a multitude embracing the correct teaching. And when we show them this, we are awakening them to the fact that this place where we dwell now is the pure land of Eagle Peak. It is the Sahe world that is the Buddha land, mm -hmm. not some place off in the west where Amida hangs, okay? Mm -hmm. We are awakening them to the fact that we can obtain Buddhahood in our present bodies, which is what, uh, which is, what is called causing living beings to awaken to the Buddha wisdom. And when these beings who have awakened can mount this jeweled vehicle and proceed directly to the place of practice, chapter three, simile and parable, this is inducing living beings to enter the path of Buddha wisdom. This is what, is true, what it truly means to use the mind of faith to open the door of Buddha wisdom. So what did he just say there? It's not enough that we just do it for ourselves. The process of doing it is really for everyone equally, okay? And it's not until we do that for everyone equally that we've actually achieved this Buddha wisdom. Because Buddha wisdom that only that stops at, I need to know this shit for myself, is not Buddha wisdom. That's full of baloney Buddha wisdom. That's not real Buddha wisdom. That's not understanding the truth. All right. He says, um, with regard to the word enter is in the phrase inducing living beings to enter the path of Buddha's wi Buddha wisdom. If we viewed it, if viewed in terms of the theoretical teaching, it refers to entering into or embracing the theoretical principle of the true aspect of all phenomena. Let me say that again. With regard to the word enter in the phrase inducing living beings to enter the path of Buddha wisdom, if viewed in terms of the theoretical teaching, it refers to entering into or embracing the, three, uh, the theoretical principle of the true aspect of all phenomena. It's to perceive the true aspect as Tentai did. All right. If viewed in terms of the essential, te uh, the, uh, in terms of the essential teaching, it means entering into an awakening that a person at the stage of being a Buddha in theory is actually a Buddha of original enlightenment. Because is that possible in anything prior to his teaching? No. Okay, so he's separating. He's saying, he's calling now the essential teaching, not the essential teaching in the last 16 chapters. The essential teaching is nam myoho renge which he just referred to in the previous paragraph. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Uh, with regard to the word enter to the phrase in the phrase inducing living beings to enter the path of, because where does this come from? I'm reading, I'm reading the expedient means chapter, right? So I'm not reading the second half of the Lotus Sutra. So he's qualifying here that this, the essential teaching is, he's not talking about the second half. All right. Uh, the theoretical principle of the tr uh, tr uh, true aspect of all phenomena. If viewed in terms of the essential teaching, nam yaho renge kyo, it means entering into an awakening, an awakening. Okay, so what is that saying? This is a personal epiphany. Attaining Buddhahood in your present form is a moment when you finally go, oh, I get it now. I am the Buddha and I always have been. And once that actually happens, that epiphany occurs, you can never go back to giving yourself, you know, so you're, not, you're on the hook. You're on the hook to be the Buddha to the last moment of your life because you've attained Buddhahood and you go backwards, you're going to pay a price for that. That's not a very, uh, well, it's not a probability actually because I don't think anybody actually is able to attain Buddhahood and go backwards, all right? But that's what he's talking about. If viewed in terms of the essential teaching, he's talking about nam myoho renge it means entering into an awakening that a person at the stage of being a Buddha in th theory is actually a Buddha of original enlightenment. When you understand those six stages of practice, that's stage five, that you just went into stage six, that is the reality. You've become a, a Buddha in reality, okay, of original enlightenment. What's original enlightenment? 
Kuan. What's Kuan? Nam Yoho Rengeki. So you've become enlightened to the truth of all things. All right. Now, persons like Nichiren and his followers who have learned to chant Nam Yoho Rengeki may be said to have entered the treasure tower. We're there. We're there at the ceremony every day of our lives. Every time we get in front of the Gohonzon, we're at the ceremony in the air right there with all those other badass dudes. With regard to the word Buddha in the phrase opening the door to Buddha, of Buddha wisdom, this refers to the Buddha world that is inherent in the nine worlds, not separate in any way, shape, or form from the true reality, what we experience every day, suffering or happiness, it doesn't matter. That true reality is still nam myoho rengeko It's still the prime point. Uh, uh, with regard to the word wisdom, it refers to the two characters, myoho, or wonderful law, to the two characters, shikan, or concentration and insight, to the two virtues of tranquility and brightness that pertain to enlightenment, and the two phases of birth and death, to the cause and effect of body and mind. That encompasses all of the schools of Buddhism. All right? To, in the end, a wisdom means the wonderful law. But the only way you got there was to get to nam myoho Rengeko. Then everything else has its place, its purpose, and its true meaning. Now you understand that all those things that were in the pre-Lotus Sutra teachings were really all referring to nam myoho Rengeko. It just wasn't time yet to call it that, and it wasn't their job to call it out and make it clear. Do you understand? Mm. All right. So... Uh, in the end, wisdom means, pardon me, okay, yeah, yeah, and the two phases of birth and death to the cause and effect of body and mind, right? Mm -hmm. Our body, you understand, when we enter into non-substantiality, we, we merge. In the end, wisdom means that, means the wonderful law to, uh, okay, it means the wonderful law. The wonderful law is nam myoho rengekyo. It means to use the wisdom of the Lotus Sutra, to use it, mm -hmm to open up the Buddha mind that you already have, that is inherent in the nine worlds, okay? If we think of this, we realize that Buddha, in fact, is the living beings of the nine worlds, okay? That's why this whole issue of mind is important, and we will get down here to where President Ikeda, <laughs> okay. Top of page 30 then. When the Buddha opens up and reveals this Buddha wisdom and asks them if they will uphold it in their present bodies till they manifest Buddha bodies, this is showing the wonderful law, or what the sutra calls showing the Buddha, uh, Buddha wisdom to living beings. And when the teacher and disciples have fully responded to one another and the disciples have received the teaching so that they gain the awakening referred to, where the sutra says, I took a vow hoping to make all persons equal to me without any distinction between us. This is what the sutra calls causing living beings to awaken to the Buddha wisdom because we all take that vow if we're going to attain Buddhahood. Every single one of us. It's not just Shakyamuni. It's not just Nichiren. It's not just Daisaku Akeda. It's not just any individual because this aspect exists in everybody. All right? When the disciples reach such an awakening, they see that all the various and individual entities in the 3,000 worlds of the Dharma realm are the Lotus Sutra. The various entities are all living beings. Is that just people? No, it's everything inclusive of the environment. When the disciples reach such an awakening, they perceive the environment as being inseparable from all things and themselves from being inseparable from all things. That's the awakening. When the disciples reach such an awakening, they see that all the various and individuals entities, individual entities in the 3000 uh, worlds of the Dharma realm are the Lotus Sutra, are nam myoho Rengekyo. Entering into this kind of inner enlightenment is what is called entering the path of Buddha wisdom. This is a matter that must be treated with secrecy because if you don't know what you're talking about, you really can't express this very succinctly and you could cause confusion and distort what's actually being expressed. Mm. So that's why he's saying you keep it secret. Make sure you know what you're talking about before you try to explain it. Again, we may say that the four processes related to the Buddha wisdom 
the opening, showing, awakening, and entering correspond to the eight phases of the Buddha's existence. O opening corresponds to the birth phase of the Buddha existence, and entering corresponds to the death phase. And the two processes in between, showing and awakening, correspond to the other six phases. Thus, the two phases that precede birth, namely descending from heaven and entering to, into his mother's wombs, correspond to the showing of the Buddha wisdom and the, phrases, and the phases of renouncing the world, conquering the devils, attaining enlightenment, and turning the wheel of the law. These are all things that Shakyamuni had to do. Okay? They're all in the pre-Lotus Sutra teachings. Okay? Correspond to this awakening that we have. Okay, so we go through the same process as Shakyamuni did in the revealing of his enlightenment, in the revealing of ours. But it's a different age, it's a different Buddha. It's a different Buddha wisdom, but it's the same truth. Do you understand? The, okay, so now we get to what President Ikeda had highlighted. The doctrines embodied in the provisional teachings were designed to remove one from the a realm of birth and death. Therefore, they cannot be termed uh, uh, the opening, showing, and awakening, awakening and entering the, of the Buddha wisdom. Okay, it says, let me say it again. The doctrines embodied in the provisional teachings, now he's talking about provisional, were designed to remove one from the realm of birth and death. Therefore, they cannot be termed the opening, showing, awakening, and entering of the Buddha wisdom. But when we come to the present sutra, the lotus, we awaken to the realization that the two phases of life and death are the wonderful workings of one mind. What is that one mind? I, this is something very important that I've been waiting since the last time we were together to clarify. Because I said that one mind is not the one mind of Daisaku or Keda. And I realized how easily I could be misunderstood because I qualified it as the one mind of Nitrin. It's the one mind of Buddha, Buddhahood, right? Mm -hmm. Buddhahood. But this is the latter day, okay? So it's the one mind of the Buddha of the latter day. It's the one mind of nam yo ho rin -gekyo. That's the one mind of Nitrin. The one mind of Daisaku Akeda is exactly the same mind. There is no difference. I'm just talking about what's a source of origin when I said that's not the, the, the mind of, of, it's my mind, frankly speaking, okay? If I can go so far as to say that, that's the truth, all right? <laughs> I'm not afraid to say that. It's my mind. I have this mind, okay? The idea is for everybody to understand that they have this mind. They just need to reveal it. And the only way to reveal it is through faith. Sorry, kids. The dogs are scratching at the window looking for treats, sorry. When we come uh, uh, to the present sutra, you gonna go help him out? You look like you're getting ready to get up. <laughs> but when we come to the present sutra, the lotus, we awaken to the realization that the two phases of life and death are the wonderful workings of one mind, and the two ways of existence and non-existence are the true functions of an inherently enlightened mind. We understand non-substantiality as an interim phase between lifetimes. This is what is meant by the opening, showing, awakening, and entering of the Buddha wisdom. And in intending to carry out these four activities with regard to the Buddha wisdom, the Buddhas of the three existences, for this one great reason, make their appearance in this world. Okay, I'll stop there as far as the orally transmitted teachings. He's also going to talk about uh, page... Uh, uh, WND2, page 844, and I always have a sense that he's going to get back to this because this is always, this is a very profound Gosho. 822, where am I here? Hang on. There it is, that's the piece of paper. It's from the unanimous declaration of the by, by all the Buddhas of the three existences on which teachings are to be kept and which are to be discarded, okay? This is a very profound uh, Gosho. I've almost read it to you on more than one occasion. But there's an uh, admonition in here, don't, because we're always on camera. I would not mind reading this to just the people at the table. But if there's anything that I should say that would confuse somebody that says this Gosho says I'm screwed. 
<laughs> and to keep my mouth shut. It says, keep this secret, keep this secret. So I advise all of you to read this Go Show on your own. I'm not responsible for what you come, come up with. Okay, but it's, it's deep and, and it's, it's very cool to read. All right, then he's saying also, page 844, the mind that is beyond comprehension constitutes the core teaching of the sutras and the treatises. So what this is basically referring to, the Daisaku Akeda is going to refer to, that he's going to say is reflected in the gift of rice, is the reality that all of the Buddhist teachings are actually reflected in what we do right now in the latter day, just chanting Nam Myoho Rengekyo. Okay? That's the core, the core of all, teaching of all the sutras and treatises. There's nothing that, 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 that those served only as a purpose of introduction to what we're doing now. So now, going on to Daisaku Akeda's lecture on page 95 of volume 7. Nothing, everybody remembers the Go Show, but hopefully. <laughs> okay. Nothing is more wonderful. <clears throat> Pardon me. Than a wonderful person that loves you. No. Nothing is more wonderful than the human mind. It is a source of infinite hope infinite hope it is a reservoir of boundless benefit and good fortune it can manifest limitless power and strength mm -hmm. nothing is more wonderful than the human mind it can do all that changing our karma though because what's always reflected is our karma mm -hmm. changing our karma realizing happiness for all humanity that's kosen rufu and creating a peaceful society, also Kos and Rufu, all begin with a change in our hearts. Mm -hmm. Nietzsche and Daishonin speaks of the wonderful workings of one mind, which I just read from you from the orally transmitted teachings, his whole spiel on point three. Mm -hmm. The workings of the human heart and mind are truly mysterious because he's qualifying this heart and mind of kokuro, kokuro, or however you pronounce it in Japanese, right? The heart and mind are the same concept, okay? So when he's talking about the mind, it, I could also be talking as, you know, my heart. Mm -hmm. The heart's, in, it's, it's where you're coming from. It's where you're coming from. It's where you're coming from, okay? Mm -hmm. That's what he's talking about. The Daishonin states, <clears throat> pardon me, the Daishonin speaks of the wonderful workings of one mind. The workings of the human heart and mind are truly mysterious. The Daishonin states, this mind that is beyond comprehension, because he's talking about your enlightened mind, okay? Not your IQ, all right? The mind of faith. Mm -hmm. This mind that is beyond comprehension, that actually has all of this power that's never ever expressed by 99.9% .9 of the human beings that live. Okay, very few people are able to find this kind of a teaching that affords them the ability to perceive their mind correctly as being limitless and powerful and able to uh, uh, address all issues that they have to deal with. The Daishona says this mind that is beyond comprehension constitutes the core teachings of the sutras and treatises. That was from uh, volume two, as I just read to you. Nichiren Buddhism is a teaching of value creation that allows us to open the limitless treasure house of the mind, the heart. He's saying the same thing. He's not talking about your brain. He's not talking about the, the organ that pumps your, your blood. He's talking about the essence of who you are and how you are, what you are. As the Daishonin says, it is the heart that is important. The intention of, in one's heart determines everything. We can achieve completely different results depending on how our minds perceive things, what they decide, and what they prompt us to do at each moment, each instance. This is the essence of faith in the mystic law and the principle of 3,000 realms in a single moment of life. Our true, pardon me, our true capacity as human beings is determined by what we have in our hearts and minds. And so, the bottom line, are our hearts and minds consistent? 
Not at all. No. <laughs> we wake up every day and it's a different battle, it's a different yeah. life condition. The thing that makes it consistent is our daily recitation of Nam Yoho Renge Kyo to the Gohonza. Mm -hmm. That's how we're able to keep this heart and mind that's in such good shape. <laughs> all right? Our true capacity as human beings is determined by what we have in our hearts and minds. You won't have the correct thing in your heart and mind if you don't chant Daimoku to the Gohonza. And I don't mm. care who you are. Mm. I don't care if you're Daisaku Akeda. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't chant Daimoku, you will start to regress in terms of where you're at going forward. Mm. Okay? A modest completion certificate. Now he's going to talk about President Toda again. He says on, on second column, page 95, in my youth, I was fortunate to receive lectures on the Lotus Sutra and Nichiren Daishonin's writings directly from my mentor, Second Soka Gakkai President Jose Toda. I guess that's exactly what I said last time, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Isn't he lucky? Gosh, I wish I had that kind of, uh, you know, I, I don't, he'd only been practicing for 11 years when he became president of the Soka Gakkai. Yeah. You think you could do that now? No way. No, no way. No, no, not going to an 11 year member near the leadership <laughs> of the world. Okay. He created all that for himself with his heart and his mind. Yes. Okay. And he could do that because his mentor yeah. had awakened him to that treasure. Mm -hmm. Yes. <clears throat> Give me a moment. In my in my youth, I was fortunate to receive lectures on the Lotus Sutra and Nichiren Daishonin's writings directly from my mentor, Second Jose, Second Soka Gakkai President Jose Toto. Thank you. Those lectures were as intense and demanding as the training undergone by a master swordsman. So, does everybody think that President Toda? taught like, uh, I don't know. Soft power. <laughs> what, you know, the, the, the point is that, <clears throat> you know, a lot of times I've been, I, I've heard people talk about my attitude, you know, I'm angry or yeah. I show, you know, you too much, too loud, too loud I look, yell, I this, I that. And you look arrogant sometimes. On my arrogance, okay, I say things unequivocally, like I really, As I you guarantee know you, I freaking know my stuff. No, that's why I always back it up with what I read to you, why I know my stuff. I show you where mm. I know my stuff. I don't just pull it out of my ass and float it into the air. Yeah, okay. Strong neither does <laughs> neither does uh, does Daisaku Akeda. So, but my point is this: not all of you. I mean, is there any here anybody here besides me that had Japanese uh, mentors? No. I mean, from Japan, Japanese mentors. Mm. Have you ever heard a Japanese and they were men? Because I was. Okay. And they are men. All right. Why not? Okay, but, but have you ever heard a Japanese male speak with something that they believe or passionately? I'm telling you, you want to hear about yelling, screaming. If you're going to say that disqualifies me, I say you're full of shit. Okay? Because I know that that is how Daisaku Akeda used to talk. Okay? In Japanese. Okay, and I know for sure Jose Toda definitely spoke that way because I read his book. Yeah. Okay? So, anybody that thinks this is about showed you bullshit or becoming priest-like or reflecting your tranquility <laughs> is so full of shit, I almost, you don't know anything about the teaching then if you're going to limit it to the, that kind of a circumstance. Mm -hmm. All right? So, I'll stop there. I just wanted to respond to that. For those of you that think that I'm angry or that I yell or whatever, I'm passionate about what I'm saying and it pisses me off that the world's filled with so many ignorant people. Okay, that's just a fact. I have to deal with it. Um, <clears throat> and when I talk about ignorance, I say it not as a pejorative, but as a fact. Everything that I know, anybody else could know. There isn't anything that I know that isn't available to anybody that wants to do the work mm. could know. All right? And that's why I speak with a little bit of attitude. Because I know that the reason that I have to tell all this stuff is because nobody else has gone to the trouble to know it themselves. So, <clears throat> let me continue. 
These lectures were as intense and demanding as the training under Gord undergone by a master swordsman. Now, this is being spoken by a Japanese dude. Do you know what a master swordsman in Japan, what it takes to be a master swordsman, to be considered a master swordsman if you're Japanese? It's not like, s'il vous plaît, okay? <laughs> Seriously, it's like ninja shit, okay? So, after one particular series of lectures ended, Mr. Toda wrote a, com a completion certificate on an ordinary piece of paper and presented it to me. It may have been a modest token, but to me it was an un unsurpassed treasure. Hopefully I don't have white stuff all over me. I studied not only Buddhism, but also a wide range of other subjects with Mr. Toda, okay? Which is the whole point. The real world is the entirety of Buddhism. That's the whole premise behind this Go Show that he's gonna try and make this point, right? That's what the Daishonin just qualified in the text itself, okay? So you can't just isolate this into some sort of a religiosity like the schools of Buddhism do. The only school that broadly perceives life is the Soka Gakkai, okay? And it's not a school, it's a lay organization, okay? We don't have a history of hundreds of years of uh, self uh, self-benefiting analysis, okay? Mm -hmm. We're doing human revolution. Yeah. Revolution, the word revolution should say it all to you. This is not about tranquility. No. This is about revolution. Mm -hmm. I studied not only Buddhism, but also a wide range of other subjects with Mr. Toda. Thanks to the training I received at Toda University, I have been able to engage in dialogues for peace with leaders in various fields around the globe because I know something about everything. All of my actions are motivated by the resolve to repay my debt of gratitude to Mr. Toda. Knowing that the disciple's victory is the mentor's victory, I have devoted my life to making the life and achievements of my great mentor known throughout the world. He certainly has done that. Whether we become happy or unhappy is not determined by other people or our environment. It is decided by our own determination or resolve, which is what I was just talking about. In light of the Daishonis teachings, a heart that appreciates and it shows gratitude for others' sincerity, sincerity is strong. Such a heart endows us with good fortune, paving the way to genuine triumph. In other words, we judge people based on not where they're at in terms of the step of the ladder that they're on, but by how much you can sense they were going to climb that ladder. They are going to climb that mm -hmm. ladder. In this chapter, page 96, top of the page, first column, in this chapter, studying the Daishonin's writings, the gifts of rice, let us learn about the attitude needed to lead happy and victorious lives. Life is the foremost of all treasures, going back to the Gosho. Human beings have life owing to food and, regarding food and regard food as their treasure. Life is the foremost of all treasures. It is expounded that even the treasures of the entire major world system cannot equal the value of one's body and life. Even the treasures that fill the major world system are no substitute for life. Life is like a lamp and food is like oil. When, when the oil is exhausted, the lamp goes out and without food, life will cease. This is why those known as the sages and worthies of ancient times offered their lives to the Buddha and then became Buddhas. On to President Kata's lecture again, bottom of the first column, page 96. The Daishonin wrote this letter in response to an offering of food he received from one of his disciples. The date and the recipient's name are unknown. In the letter, the Daishonin carefully explains that offering the precious gift of polished rice, rice which sustains life, is the same as offering one's very life. Such an action, he says, brings great benefit and ensures the attainment of Buddhahood. He begins the letter by listing the items his disciple has sent him, writing, I have received a sack of polished rice, the sack of yams, and the basket of uh, river labor that you took the trouble to send me. The gifts are an expression of the disciple's sincere wish to support and bring joy to the Daishonin. The Daishonin praises his, this sincerity, clarifying how infinitely noble it is from the perspective of Buddhism. 
Two things are treasures to all people, he says, food and clothing. Both are treasures because they support the supreme treasure of life. Next, he explains that life is the foremost of all treasures, more valuable than all the treasures of the universe. It is not uh, the foremost in comparison to anything else. It is absolutely noble and, and supreme. Pardon me, let me go back. It is not the foremost in comparison to anything else. It is absolutely noble and supreme. In other words, it's not, compar it's not comparable to anything else, okay? In all the, because it's your karma. It's those, it's all the living being's karma that's being expressed every time they're in a manifest state. So it's not comparable. You can't compare one plant to another plant any more than I can compare one human being to another being, human being, or one sex to another sex or anything else, one nationality to another nationality, one race to another race. They're all inclusive and they're all equal, okay? And they're all connected. None of them are separable. Next, he explains that life is the foremost of all treasure, treasures, more valuable than all the treasures of the universe. It is not the foremost in comparison to anything else. It is absolutely noble and supreme. In all the world, there is no treasure as precious as the life of a single individual. The life then, like the Daishonin then, likens life to a lamp and food to oil. As a lamp goes out when it runs out of oil, this precious life is extinguished when it runs out of food. That is why the Daishonin says making an offering of food, you with me? Uh, which sustains life is the equivalent of offering one's life itself. To further clarify this point, he explains the significance of offering things one regards as precious out of reverence for the Buddha. He writes, in worshiping all the deities and Buddhas, the word Namu is put ahead of their names. To explain exactly what Namu means, Namu is a word from India. In Japan and China, it is translated as dedicating one's life. Dedicating one's life means to offer one's life to the Buddha. That's the top of page 97, first column. No treasure exceeds the one called life. This is why, uh, this is why those known as sages and worthies of ancient times offered their lives to the Buddha and then became Buddhas, also from the Gosho. As examples, as examples of those who made such offerings, the Daishonin cites the Boy Snow Mountains. <clears throat> we all know that session, Doji, right? Bodhisattva Medicine King, Prince Shotoku, and uh, Emperor Tenji. The first two fall into the category of sages who dedicated themselves completely to Buddhist practice, Buddhist practice while the two, second two fall into the category of worthies or wise persons who protected and transmitted Buddhism. Offering uh, one's most precious life for the sake of the Buddha or law, or the law, the Daishonin asserts, opens the way to the attainment of Buddhahood. He concedes, however, that because these things are the affairs of worthies and sages, they are impossible for us to do. Asking the same sacrifices from ordinary people in the latter day of the law is asking the impossible. Okay, so it's, it's realistic, okay? We don't have to burn our arms or go have our faces branded or any weird stuff like that, okay? He says, he continues though, does that mean then that we can never attain Buddhahood? No, it, is most cer it most certainly does not. The theme of this letter is establishing a Buddhism for ordinary people that opens the way to Buddhahood for all in the latter day of the law. Because we all become mentors. We all become Buddhas in our present form. There's no shortage of Buddhas existing in the Sahih world. In reality, you don't have to rely on somebody from hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago, okay? Earnest resolve is the key to ordinary people attaining Buddhahood. That's what this is all about, 97 second column going back to the Gosho. However, as for the matter of becoming a Buddha, ordinary people keep in mind the words earnest resolve and thereby become Buddhas. When we carefully consider what exactly earnest resolve refers to, it is the doctrine of, of observing the mind. Okay, earnest resolve is our Buddha nature constantly telling us, gotta go chant Daimoku. 
Got to go read the Gosho. Got to tell that person about Nam Yoho Rengekyo. Got to encourage that person that's ill or suffering. Okay? That Buddha mind is the mind that comes about when we behave this way. Mm. <clears throat> when we carefully consider what exactly earnest resolve refers to, it really is, it refers to you understanding you're the Buddha and that you're devoted to the establishment of the correct teaching for the pacification of the land. You're here for Kosen Rufu. You're a Bodhisattva of the earth. It's not difficult to understand. What exactly earnest result, it, re, it is the doctrine of observing the mind, okay? When we're in front of the Gohonzon, that's what we do. We say, Nam Yoho Renge Go over and over again, and we think, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what comes back to us is either wisdom or BS based on our mind. Mm -hmm. What is, where is our heart? Why are we chanting that Daimoku? Are we chanting it because we got it? Because we have to? Or bad things will happen if I don't? That's incorrect faith, <laughs> all right? When if something bad happens, it's because you get your head up your ass. When we inquire uh, into what exactly the doctrine of observing the mind refers to, it means that offering one's only robe to the Lotus Sutra is equivalent to peeling off one's skin. And that in a time of famine, offering the food that is only... Uh, that is the only means for, for sustaining one's life that day to the Buddha is offering one's life to the Buddha. What is that saying in code? What are we doing then when we behave with that kind of mind? We're not begrudging our lives. Mm -hmm. Do not begrudge your life. That's all that qualified. Do not begrudge your life for the sake of the law, for the sake of Kosen Rufu for the sake of the, of, of the Buddhism of sowing, being broadly widespread propagation. That's, that's why we are here. We're not you know, people that don't know anything about the law. We're not people that never had the fortune to encounter the law. The, the, the teaching says that by virtue of us having even gotten this far, we obviously are already Buddhists, have already been Buddhists on in many occasions, have served many Buddhists before, da 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 da, -da that goes on and on and praises us. And then we're born into this Sahe world of whatever condition that we are, and we kind of bitch instead of going like, I gotta overcome all this? <laughs> okay, I must have done some good stuff. All right, the Daishonin writes, Continuing on page 97, second column. Ordinary people keep in mind the words earnest resolve and thereby become Buddhas. They don't forget their vow. That's the earnest resolve. What exactly is this earnest resolve? The Daishonin said it is the doctrine of observing the mind, a teaching outlined by the great teacher Tentai in his work, Great Concentration and Insight. Okay, so he refers to something that Shakyamuni did, may have initiated in what he said, but it's not from Shakyamuni, it's from Tentai. Okay, so it's this whole lineage of Buddhas that led to the latter day. The Daishonin writes, ordinary people keep in mind the words earnest resolve and thereby become Buddhas. What exactly is this earnest resolve? The Daishonin said is it is the doctrine of observing the mind, a teaching outlined by the great teacher Tentai in his work, Great Concentration and Insight, the Makashikan. The term observing the mind or observe observation of the mind is used in contrast to doctrinal study of the sutras and is practiced for attaining and is the practice for attaining Buddhahood. The Dachonin next briefly explains what observing the mind means for us ordinary people in concrete terms. He says that offering the single robe in one's possession for the sake of the Lotus Sutra, for the sake of the teaching of Nam Yoho Rengeko in the latter day, is equivalent to a, sage, a sage's practice of peeling off skin, off his skin to use his writing paper to record the teachings. Similarly, offering one's only food at a time of famine to the Buddha is equivalent to offering one's life. Do not begrudge your life. Such offerings of clothing and food then are exactly the same as the sages of old offering their lives. And the benefit one receives from making such offerings will lead one to attain Buddhahood. The key point of this practice is earnest resolve. That's your devotion. That's your faith. That's your vow. Okay? I won't stop until I get there. No matter what, you can't discourage me. I won't quit. 
The key point of this practice is earnest resolve, says the Daishonin. The fundamental cause for attaining Buddhahood is the earnest resolve to seek, have faith in, and protect the Lotus Sutra, a teaching that opens the way to enlightenment for all living beings, because you got to do that for everybody else, not just for you. Mm -hmm. And the Buddha who uh, teaches it, and the Buddha who teaches it, mm -hmm. and the Buddha who teaches it. At a point in time, you become that Buddha. Mm -hmm. All right? And people will be giving you alms. I got cookies and stuff. <laughs> okay? That is why, thank you for everything, by the way. Thank you, sincerely. That is why that I shown and declares ordinary people keep in mind the words earnest resolve and thereby become Buddhas. Founding Soka Gakkai president Tanessa Buramakaguchli heavy, heavily underlined this passage in his personal copy of Nietzsche and Daishonin's writings. Chanting Nam Myoho Rengekyo and taking action for the sake of the mystic law and for one's mentor who teaches and spreads the mystic law comprise the direct path to attaining Buddhahood. Let me say it again. Chanting Nam Myoho Rengekyo and taking action What's taking action for the sake of the mystic law and for one's mentor? To do kosen ufu. Right. To do all those things we just discussed. Mm -hmm. You know, to, to do gongu, to do all the things that keep your engine running. Mm -hmm. All right? The oil for your lamp. Mm -hmm. Okay? Chanting nam myoho rengekyo and taking action for the sake of the mystic law and for one's mentor. And why is he throw that in there? If you don't have appreciation for the mentor and the mentors, then you can't appreciate what you're doing yourself correctly. Mm -hmm. Okay? You don't take seriously that you are the Buddha because the mentor is the one that opens the way for you to become the Buddha, mm -hmm. to even explain to you that you already are the Buddha, to give you a shot at aspiration for it, to show you how to aspire for it, what to do, what to continue to do. So you must always continue to appreciate the mentor. Now, the original mentor is Nichiren, but there are many mentors along the way, and each one of us has different ones, okay? Other than the one mentor of Nichiren, okay? And for the Soka Gakkai, we would all have to say the first three presidents are all our mentors as well. But again, those three presidents are a point in time in history, okay? The world and the calendar will keep flipping, Right. What are we going to do in 50 years? That's our job, is to take those lessons of the mentor. What he's teaching us right now, we have to incorporate into our actions as lives. Mm. Not just our understanding mm. to know shit, but what we do, how we function as Buddhas in our present form. Chanting Nam Myoho Rengekyo and taking action for the sake of the mystic law and for one's mentor who teaches and spreads the mystic law, comprise the direct path to attaining Buddhahood. The direct path. Mm -hmm. In Japanese, the word for mission, shimei, is written with two characters that mean to use one's life. The purpose for which we use our precious lives is important. Working to realize the mission of Kosen Rufu, making our mentor's heart our own, and praying and taking action for the happiness of others is the most respectable behavior we can engage in as human beings. Such behavior is exemplified by the admirable members of the SGI. When they see someone in trouble or distress, they put their own needs aside and reach out to them. Okay? Now that's... <laughs> Such behavior is exemplified by the admirable members of the Soka of the SGI. I don't know that he's necessarily talking about every single member. He's talking about the admirable members that actually react this way when they see these needs. Because not everybody that's a member of the Soka Gakkai does that. Mm. Frankly, that's why there's issues. That's why there's problems. Because there's people that haven't done what they're supposed to do correctly. And they've left a legacy of incorrect action. Mm -hmm. All right. They put their own needs aside and reach out to help. When they learn someone has a problem, they immediately rush to their aid. No matter how busy they are or how far they must travel, they eagerly attend discussion meetings. The lives of SGI members who unstintingly give of themselves 
and, uh, and their time to work for the happiness of others and for Kosen Rufu shine with the earnest resolve of faith that Nitrin Daishonin is certain to praise most highly. That is why those who steadily engage in SGI activities enter the path to leading to happiness and victory without fail. Now he's going to qualify for my sake somewhere here i know it's already there did i already go buy it i couldn't have oh it must be in the next lecture never mind where am i now never be defeated in spirit gosh doggone it okay never be defeated in spirit earnest resolve means to focus our minds means to focus our minds on our true identity and to live up to that true identity what we direct our minds at is important. Clarifying and setting a functional, a fundamental purpose for our actions is crucial. As SGI members, we direct our minds toward the Gohonzon and Kosen Rufu. Earnest resolve cannot be seen, but through its power, we can orient ourselves in the, in the direction of victory and happiness. Life, here it is, it is here. I thought I had marked this page number. To, okay, this is cool. Because he just talked about going to activities, right? Mm -hmm. I don't go to any activities. Okay? So, okay, of course, I'm like a little sensitive when I read that at first. I'm like, whoa, whoa, but, uh, but then he qualifies two paragraphs below. No, Tom, you're there. All right, so he says, never be defeated in spirit. Earnest resolve means to focus our minds. What we direct our minds at is important. Clarifying and setting a fundamental purpose for our actions is crucial. As SGI members, we direct our minds toward the Gohonzon and Kosen Rufu. Earnest resolve cannot be seen. It's not anybody that somebody can qualify by looking at you. But through its power, we can orient ourselves in the direction of victory and happiness. Life isn't always smooth and pleasant. Some of you may be struggling or suffering over not being able to take part in SGI activities as much as you'd like because of work, illness, or some other circumstances. When you find yourselves in such a situation, as I did, that's the time to direct your mind toward the Gohan Sun. Those who run away from activities don't face such an internal struggle in the first place, okay? But it's just, there's a difference between running away from activities and having them not actually suit what you need at this moment again. I could go sit in a meeting anywhere in this country and they would have to make a special accommodation to talk to me in English. And I wouldn't understand what anybody said. And I could express to them all kinds of confidence and life condition and still not be able to reach them. I can, by doing what I'm doing right now, reach more people that can understand where I'm coming from and understand what I'm saying than if I went to activities that I could go to because they exist on this island. I just don't attend them, okay? I also am in a state of remonstration with the local SGI uh, uh, organization here for reasons that I won't go into here because they're personal private and they won't be mentioned until we go private. And we will go private for the conversation I'm talking about. That will not be a public process. Just for you all to know, the <laughs> it's not something I'm going to expose to the people that won't understand where I'm coming from in the first place. Um, I'll let up somebody else do that for you. Okay, that's the time to direct your mind toward the Golhunzan. Okay, so what he's basically saying is that when you can't go run around and be social, get deep. Okay, when you can't just go live off the vibe and the and the and the and the uh, 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 life condition boost that you get from being around an activity, go deep. Find out how you can establish that on your own through your understanding of the Gohonzon, through your understanding of how to correctly uh, beseech the Gohonzon to advance in your own life and your own mission. All right, that's what I'm doing right now. Those who run away from activities don't face such an internal struggle in the first place because they don't have this vow that they've taken and now they got to figure out what they're going to do because they can't get to activities anymore. How am I going to fulfill my function as a bodhisattva of the earth? Am I just going to stop? I can't do that. 
Okay, what am I gonna do? Okay, I'll go help other people. That's what I started doing with the hippies back in 2004. All right, that led to me reading all the Goshos that I shared with him, which was almost all of the Goshos. It's like I said, 1800 pages worth of stuff. Okay, I had to read it once, read it again, and read it a third time. And now with you guys, I have to read it once, I have to read the lecture again. I have to read everything again and again and again. I've read all this stuff multiple times. Mm. That's why I can expound it the way I expound it, with the confidence that I expound it with. That's why it's so easily misunderstood. <laughs> I don't think that everybody's uh, been fortunate enough to have that much adversity in their life. All of my good fortune comes from adversity. My adversity is the thing that forced me to grow, not my benefit. My benefit led me to complacency. It did not lead me to true appreciation because it didn't last, okay? Only the adversity. So it's my good fortune. Okay, that you're wrestling with this problem is itself, okay, so if, 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 you're, if, you're, if you're stressing over you can't do activities organizationally, but you decide to devote your life to the Gohonzon in whatever way you can, Okay, that itself expresses the correct attitude of faith. Mm. Okay, that's why he's saying people that run away from activities don't want to do act. They don't even have that mind of compassion or that mind to advance. Okay, so he's saying then the next thing that you are wrestling with this problem, this conundrum. How do I still achieve function as a bodhisattva of the earth? is itself proof that you are challenging yourself based on faith. Now this is, thank you Daisaku Akeda, you said all this for me. There's nothing wrong with what I'm doing. I'm challenging myself based on my faith. Struggling with, pro so in other words, I don't have somebody I get to go to and cry on their shoulder. <laughs> I have to go to the Gohonzon. Mm -hmm. I have to go to the Gosho. I have to manifest it from within. I have to observe my mind. Yes. I have to observe my mind. I have to say, hey, Tom, you're full of shit. That's, you know that's wrong. Oh, come out of wherever I was headed and get back on track on my own. We all need to learn how to do that. Okay? So he says, struggling with problems makes you stronger. I got to tell you, I agree with him. Thank you. Problems? There's no need to worry. That's the biggest key. That's the hardest part is to not worry. Because you're going to have a sense of worry a lot of times. Yes. When it feels like the bottom's falling out, you're chanting all the Daimoku, and there's no resolution to what you need. Yeah. Okay? That's when faith is the thing that sees you through. That's why he says faith is so important because there are going to be times when you have to validate the fact that you're the Buddha, period, based on you, not based on anything else, not based on the go. It's based on your action. It's based on where your head is at. It's based on what you do every day. Okay? The key, he says, is to take one step. Even, and this is my total experience personally, the key is to take one step, even half a step, even half a step forward to find the courage to keep going and to have the faith not to stop. To, am, I, am I shouting now? I'm no. sorry if I'm shouting. The key is to take one step, even half a step forward to keep acting with earnest resolve. Earnest resolve has no end. You can't burn it out. It can't be defeated. Earnest resolve cannot be defeated. Yeah. Something that is actual, or that's your Buddha nature is activated. If Unless you're not chanting, now if you think you can do it just by knowing shit and you don't have to engage the Gohonzon or your relationship with the Gohonzon, then no, I, I, I think you could run into a dead end. Okay, but as long as you don't ever abandon that particular element, you can observe your mind. You can always uh, 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 self-diagnose pretty simply, especially after two or three decades. After two or three decades, if you finally decide and you direct your mind toward the Gohonzon as a natural process of going through the six stages of practice, you become a Buddha in your present form. 
right? You've been that all along, but it's been theoretical because you've not understood you're the Buddha. You don't really believe that it's you. You don't take the responsibility for that responsibility, that fortune. Excuse me if I'm spitting. Okay, the key is to take one step, even half a step forward to keep acting with earnest resolve and to keep that resolve alive. That is what is meant for us to, uh, that is what it means for us to keep in mind earnest resolve. Continue page 99. Practicing the way of attaining Buddhahood in the real world. The true path from the Gosho, the true path lies in the affairs of this world. The Golden Light Sutra, I need a tissue again, to have a, here, thank you. Pardon me. The Golden Light Sutra states, to have a profound knowledge of this world is itself Buddhism. The Nirvana Sutra states, all of the non-Buddhist scriptures uh, are writings in, and writings in society are themselves Buddhist teachings. It's running, so I'm gonna need to hold on to it. Not Buddhist, are, 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 are themselves Buddhist teachings and not Buddhist, te or pardon me, are themselves Buddhist teachings, not non-Buddhist teachings. When uh, the great teacher Miolo compared these passages with one from the sixth volume of the Lotus Sutra that reads the worldly affairs of life or work, uh, no, no worldly affairs of life or work are ever contrary to the true reality. He revealed their meaning and pointed out that although the first two sutras are profound, since their uh, 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 meaning is still shallow, it fails to approach that of the Lotus Sutra. They relate uh, secular matters in terms of Buddhism, whereas Lotus Sutra explains that in the end, secular matters are the entirety of Buddhism. That was from the Gosho. The true path, second column, page 99. The true path mentioned by the Daishonin in this passage refers to the true path for ordinary people to attain Buddhahood. Where is that path found? The Daishonin says that it lies in the affairs of this world. Okay, so that was very deep and that was important to understand. The true path mentioned by the Daishonin in this passage refers to the true path for ordinary people to attain Buddhahood. Where is that path found? What's he gonna say here? Does he talk about, okay, the Daishonin says that it lies in the affairs of this world. For us ordinary people in the latter day of the law, the path to attaining Buddhahood lies in striving with earnest resolve in our Buddhist practice to, uh, in the midst of society in the real world. <laughs> yeah, he's just crying and crying and crying. He's a baby boy. He's only a year old. He's he just. To by the way, you guys can't see this dog. He's giant. He's a giant dog. Really, he's a big dog. Yeah. Mm. He's a very big dog. Yeah, not used to Listen to him cry. You would think he was the size of yours. <laughs> <laughs> the Daishonin says that it lies in the affairs of this world. For us ordinary people in the latter day of the law, the path to attaining Buddhahood lies in striving with earnest resolve in our Buddhist practice in the midst of society in the real world. What's that qualifying? You don't go in a cave and practice. Yeah, well, you can't. It doesn't just you happen at the Zadankai. It doesn't. It uh, doesn't just happen at the Zadankai. Uh, you have to live like this, uh, right? You have to ex try to express this in your daily life. Uh, All right. Here, citing sutra passages and commentary by the great teacher Myolo, the Daishonin discusses the differing views of the Lotus Sutra and other sutras on relationship between on the relationship between Buddhism and the affairs of the world. His conclusion is that, his conclusion is that while sutras other than Lotus Sutra recognize that secular affairs accord with Buddhist principles, the Lotus Sutra regards matters of life and society as representing the entirety of Buddhism. Mm -hmm. The only thing that they exist for is as a means for you to achieve your own personal happiness and for you to help others achieve theirs. Yes. Thank you. In the sutras, other than, and, and, and that happens in a variety of ways. We all have different true realities, right? <laughs> in the sutras, other than the Lotus Sutra, the affairs of the world are seen as obstructions to the practice for attaining Buddhahood. That's why guys, when they were 50, 55, would split and go off and, 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 and leave the realm of family life and become like lay priests and stuff. They'd go seek the truth, right? He says, 
In the sutras other than the Lotus Sutra, the affairs of the world are seen as obstructions to the practice for attaining Buddhahood. That's the other school. That's the other, that's the pre-Lotus Sutra schools. Okay. At best, worldly affairs are viewed as relating to the practice of Buddhism to the extent that most advanced teachings of the secular world are in accord with Buddhism. This represents a way of thinking in which the affairs of the world are understood in terms of Buddhism. In contrast, the Lotus Sutra teaches that worldly affairs are not different from and do not stand in opposition to the truth of Buddhism. Page 100, first column. They are Buddhism itself, just as they are. In reality, fundamental to Nichiren Daichonin's lifelong efforts was his striving together with his disciples amid the affairs of this world to spread Buddhism and leading ordinary people to happiness. For example, even the stout-hearted Shijong Kingo, and this is something that we don't all know. He's talking about it right now. I don't know what the reference point is, but I'm sure that this is the case since it's coming from President Ikeda. For example, even the stout-hearted Shijo Kingo, which I would say is like the ultimate dude of faith, yeah. personally, in my mind. Mm. For example, even the stout-hearted Shijo Kingo was, so was once so troubled by the discord in his life in the secular world that he considered entering the B Buddhist priesthood. <laughs> Okay, but at that juncture, the Daishonin encouraged him, live so that all the people of Kamakura will say in your praise that not, Nakatsuka Kasa, uh, Nakatsukasa, Saburo Semenojo Shijo Kingo is diligent in his service to, of his Lord in the service of Buddhism and in his conserve, concern for other people. <clears throat> Buddhism doesn't exist apart from our actual lives and circumstances. Buddhism doesn't exist outside the reality or apart from the affairs of this world, which is also what I was speaking to in that last conversation. We got to accommodate the realities of this world mm -hmm. as it is right now. At the end of this, it'll, he'll say the date. This is from 2014, okay, six years before COVID. <clears throat> the SGI has grown to the extent it has become it has because it has demonstrated uh, proof of the victory of Buddhism in daily life, just as the Daishonin taught. But unfortunately, that stops with a lot of people getting benefits. And when they stop getting benefits because they're not advancing their faith, they go Titan. They don't, it doesn't work anymore. Yeah. A teaching for people's happiness, second column, page 100. Nietzsche and Buddhism is a teaching for people's happiness. It enables anyone who is struggling amid the harsh realities of life to attain a state of unshakable happiness. That's Buddhahood. This is in stark contrast to the pre-Lotus Sutra teachings, which held that countless kalpas of practice were necessary to attain enlightenment. They maintain that only after becoming a sage or worthy through what, uh, training one's body and mind over an incalculably long period of many lifetimes, through practices carried out separate and apart from the realities of daily life, daily life, could one attain a state of unshakable happiness, attain Buddhahood. Such teachings make our present life nothing more than a means to a religious end, which is just a step away from regarding people as existing for the sake of religion. The practice of the Lotus Sutra, Nietzsche and Buddhism, <coughs> however, involves struggling with the realities of a daily life, a struggle that opens up and reveals the life state of Buddhahood within us. In other words, establishing a state of unshakable happiness. In a, in a, it is a religion for real people, a religion of human revolution. It is the true practice that accords with the Daishonis teaching that the true path lies in the world, in the affairs of this world. Mr. Tota said very strictly, I wonder if he kept a low tone of voice. Mr. Tota said very strictly, I assert that a person who doesn't dedicate himself wholeheartedly to his work is slandering the law. Not enjoying experiencing joy in one's work is the same as not experiencing joy in one's faith. No matter how much Daimoku you may chant, you will not succeed in society. That was President Tota talking. <clears throat> Since the time of Mr. Makaguchi, Mr. Makaguchi, the Soka Gakkai has advanced directly along the true path of applying Buddhism as a teaching for daily living. It's not, we, go to, we don't go and listen to an oko like a Sunday sermon from any minister of any religion. Mm -hmm. 
and it is striven to carry out actions of great good based on the mystic law, creating value that benefits ourselves and society. In his drama, Faust, is mm. that correct? Oui. Goethe. 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 Yeah. Okay, Goethe. I finally got close. <laughs> Goethe <laughs> said, wrote, uh, in, in a final wisdom we can reach, he only merits freedom and existence who wins them every day anew. Wow. Isn't that good? It was a good, it was a pretty deep dude. <laughs> the true path encompasses our sincere efforts to contribute to our communities, our dialogues aimed at realizing the Daishonin's ideal of establishing the correct teaching for the peace of the land and our activities for world peace. We of the SGI strive to reveal our own Buddhahood and help others do the same. Our movement constitutes the true path of benefiting both oneself and others. Bottom of the first column, page 101. The essence of the sutras preached, be, this is from the Gosho. The essence of the sutras preached before the Lotus Sutra is that all phenomena arise from the mind. To illustrate, they say that the mind that is, uh, that they say that the mind is like the, the great earth, while the grasses and trees are all like, are like, are all, are, pardon me, are like all phenomena. But it is not so with the Lotus Sutra. It teaches that the mind itself is the great earth and that the great earth itself is the grasses and trees. The meaning of the earlier sutras is that clarity of mind is like the moon and that purity of mind is like a flower. But it is not so with the Lotus Sutra. It is the teaching that the moon itself is mind and the flower itself is mind. You should realize from this that polished rice is not polished rice. It is life itself. When we examine, going on to the lecture, page 101, second column, when we examine all the diverse and varied phenomena, varied phenomena of the world based on the Lotus Sutra's view of practice and attaining Buddhahood, what do we see? Once again, the Daishonin compares the pre-Lotus Sutra teachings to the Lotus Sutra. First, he says, the basic teaching of the pre-Lotus Sutra scriptures is that all phenomena arise from the mind. In other words, all the phenomena that, are, that comprise our lives and everything in our environment are the products of our minds. This is what is meant by the expression, one reaps what one sows, that what happens to us is the result of our actions. But the pre-Lotus Sutra scriptures teach that to transform the results of our deeds, we must spend long eons eliminating the results of our negative karma and accumulating great amounts of good karma toward the future. In other words, we must engage in countless kalpas of practice. Page 102. It would be like, for example, paying back a huge loan a little bit at a time with no end in sight, and then also trying to save your money carefully until you've reached your goal, while remaining ignorant of the fact that all along you possessed the cluster of unsurpassed jewels, that is, the Buddhahood within you. The Lotus Sutra expounds a different teaching. The Daishonin says, it teaches that the mind itself is the great earth, and that the great earth itself is the grasses and trees. No separation between anything. The Lotus Sutra teaches that the enlightenment, the enlightened state of the Buddha, that is the world of Buddhahood, is originally inherent in all living beings. By having faith in and practicing the Lotus Sutra, Nam Myoho Rengekyo, which reveals this truth of life, anyone can bring forth their Buddhahood. All of us can become Buddhas in this lifetime just as we are. Our, the, the lives of ordinary people can instantly manifest Buddha, Buddhahood. It is an epiphany. It is a realization. It is the sixth stage of practice. When our minds change, we and our world change also change. The Lotus Sutra teaches this as the wonderful workings of one mind, OTT. It's the one mind of Buddhahood and this mind that is beyond comprehension. Also from, chap from the second volume, as I read from the Go Show. One's mind, the innermost realm of life, is vast and boundless. It is dynamic. Exploring and analyzing this mind that is beyond comprehension, that's why he calls it the region of the unfathomable, in his work, Great Concentration and Insight, the great teacher Tentai formulated its reality as the principle of 3,000 realms in a single moment of life. All phenomena of the 3,000 realms, that is, of, that is, all things in the universe, are contained within a single moment of life. There's no separation between anything, whether it's in a state of non-substantiality or a manifest state. 
our innermost mind, pardon me, of life, or innermost mind of us ordinary human beings. Likewise, a single moment of life or mind pervades the 3,000 realms. There's nothing that it's not included. When the state of our minds changes, when we understand this simple truth, we change. We become Buddhas. Or rather, by changing the innermost orientation of our minds, we change both ourselves and the world, because Esho Funi will make that so. Our, the oneness between of us and our environments. That's how you turn the Sahe world into a Buddha land. That's what Kosen Rufu does. That is the Buddhism of 3,000 realms in a single moment of life, if you understand it correctly for what it actually is. Mm -hmm. Everything is determined. It's not a theoretical construct. It's a process of actualization. Everything is determined and, is only, and it has to be actualized for it to be real. Otherwise, it's theoretical. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay? Everything is determined by the direction in which our earnest resolve orients our minds. Are we bodhisattvas of the earth? Are we disciples of the original teacher? Are we Buddhas at our, at our, at our essence? When we focus our earnest resolve on our Buddhist practice, believing in and practicing the mystic law, as we've been taught, that enables all people to attain enlightenment, our inner Buddhahood reveals itself, pervading our lives and our, and our environment. We become Buddhas in our present form. Polished rice is, its, is life itself, page 102, second column. Explaining the essence of the Lotus Sutra's teaching on the mind, the Daishonin says, the moon itself is mine and the flower itself is mine. What a beautiful way of expressing this truth. The Daishonis saw the Buddha in the moon shining from behind the veil, of, uh, uh, the veil of clouds in a flower that endured the cold of winter to bloom beautifully in spring. He saw, that the, life, he saw the life state of Buddhahood in the natural form of all things, just as they are. All things contain our, our expressions of Buddhahood. Whenever I read this passage, I am deeply, deeply struck by the, because everything is nam myoho rengekyo. You got to understand that's why he can say that, and that's why it's the truth. Whenever I read this passage, I am deep, deeply struck by the great compassion of the Daishonin as he sought to open the way to happiness for all people. <clears throat> he consistently praised his disciples struggling amid the realities of the world. Pardon me, I'm running out of gas. He consistently mm -hmm. praised his disciples struggling amid the realities of the world by assuring them that they were Buddhas, exactly as they were. The clarity of mind and purity of mind taught in the pre-Lotus Sutra scriptures might seem like a beautiful idea at first, but they do not compare with the concept of life as embodied as embodying the mutual possession of the ten worlds taught in the Lotus Sutra, that there's no separation between anything, anything, anywhere. The true attainment of Buddhahood is not departing from this Sahe world that is filled with suffering and becoming some transcendent superhuman being in a Buddha land. As the Daishonin puts it, it is not so with the Lotus Sutra. Buddhas are people people who are fully engaged with the activities of daily life without being defeated by the difficult challenges of reality, but shining as the most human of human beings. Though uh, raging waves of karma, pardon me, or destiny may seem to assault them, they burn with the uh, earnest resolve of faith and go on striving their hardest. That is the true manifestation of the supremely noble life state of Buddhahood. The Daishonin states, polished rice is not polished rice, it is life itself. In other words, the offering of rice was not simply rice, but an offering of the disciple's life itself. The Daishonin here is assuring his disciple that through demonstrating an earnest resolve to strive alongside him, he or she will attain Buddhahood as surely as the sages and worthies of times past who gave their lives for the sake of Buddhism. I am, re I am reminded of an episode in the life of the American social activist, Helen Keller. Though blind and deaf, she went on to dedicate herself to the welfare of others, imparting hope to all humanity. Keller always prized and remembered the gift of a donation to one of her charities, along with a bouquet of roses sent to her by a teenage boy with a disability. Recalling his sincere gesture, she wrote, the roses have withered long ago, and the young heart that stirred to that fine impulse has ceased to, be, to beat, but the lovely deed will blossom forever in the garden of my soul. Our movement is the same. 
Everything starts with valuing the sincere intention. <laughs> Poor baby. Our movement is the same. Everything starts with the value, uh, with valuing the sincere intention, the earnest resolve of the person right in front of us. The earnest resolve of ordinary individuals is always the driving force of history. An earnest resolve is synonymous with a vow. All of our members' effort, exertion, and hard work for Kosen Rufu are not just activities. They are life itself. The Buddhas of the Ten Directions and Three existence, uh, Existences are certain to praise us. The heavenly deities cannot fail to protect us. At the third memorial, second ever, anniversary of Mr. Makaguchi's death in November 1946, Mr. To Toda declared as his mentors, Mr. Decloda, Mr. Toda declared as his mentor's true disciple, I am determined to carry on your resolve and fulfill the mission of the Gakkai so that I may deserve your praise when I see you again at Eagle Peak. Last page, page 104. The earnest resolve, top of the first column, shared by the mentors, plural, and disciples of Soka is synonymous with the vow for Kosa Rufu. The Japanese word for fellow member or comrade, doshi, can also be read as shared resolve, meaning those who share the same resolve or commitment, those of the same mind as Nitrin. The SGI is a gathering of fellow members, comrades in faith, who share the same purpose and resolve of the same mind as Nitrin. None have a stronger resolve than we, the members of the SGI, who are striving arduously for the for Coast and Rufu, united in the spirit of many in body, one in mind, as we empathize with and encourage one another. That's why we have successfully spread Nietzsche and Buddhism around the globe. SGI members dedicated to the earnest resolve of helping all people are the treasures of the world. SGI members with the resolve to realize peace. Okay, because he's qualifying again. SGI members with the resolve to realize peace are the treasures of humanity. Not just because they're members of the SGI, because they're of the same mind as the original teacher and the mentor, Daisaku, Ikeda. The expansion of our network of shared resolve which will change our planet into a beautiful treasure realm. Mr. Tota declared we should focus our efforts on fostering one new sincere member and then foster another and another. This is what creates the time. So just one at a time. He's saying just concentrate one at a time. That's all you got to do. You don't have to do a hundred at a time, a thousand at a time. They'll accumulate. We need, second column, page 104, we need to create the time for tremendous dynamic development, sincerely fostering and encouraging one after another, friends who share our earnest resolve. That's my earnest resolve. That's what I was talking about a week, three weeks ago. Mr. Toda asserted, if you stand up with a powerful commitment to this magnificent movement, it is as clear as day that you will be able to gain true lasting happiness. Let us boldly and energetically set forth with our fellow members with whom we share a noble, earnest resolve toward victorious dynamic development for ourselves, our families, our work, and our communities. With sincere gratitude for everyone's efforts and activities, we put the finishing touches on this year, 2014. So again, this is nine years ago that President Ikeda uh, wrote this originally. I also want to, before you stop, I just want to explain the puppy knows what goes on when everybody gathers around the table. So he knows that all these people, these fine people bring treats for him. <laughs> and he knows like, when are you gonna get done with the talking in there and bring me my treat? So he's not trying to misbehave. He's a Buddha dog, I guarantee you he's a Buddha dog. He got a bunch of Buddhas giving him stuff, he's a Buddha dog, okay? I appreciate you all coming today. Gene, you're going to be around for a while, right? Yes. Can you make it next Saturday again? Yes. Okay, so we got that. Amy, mm -hmm. see you again next week? Sling? Sling? Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully. Okay, because next week's important. It's a continuation of the conversation from a week ago. All right? Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.